Uh, what's up, guys? It's Kyle with another episode of Unlocking Inner Strength with a, a, another Kyle here, a uh, real inspiration. So, Kyle of Superhuman Fathers, Kyle, thanks for being with me today. Yeah, dude, we've already, we we we're already sweating here. We already like uh, oh, yeah. we're we're already gonna wear our voices out just in the warm up for this fucking. Dude, show. That's where it's almost like, man, I wish I had been recording what we were just talking about. But it's all fire, dude. It doesn't even fucking matter. It doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter. So, you know, for, for my listeners that are new to you, you're out in California, right? Yeah. Where about in California? Oceanside, just north San Diego. Like, okay. Raised there, man. Like Oceanside. Uh, Wes Watson's from Oceanside. We used to skate when we were kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Like, Yeah, I didn't know that. Wes fucking ripped as a kid, dude. He's so good. Like he started skating. I was better than most of the guys. And then Wes just blew past us, dude. Like so fast. It actually pissed me off. I see this little, this kid just ripping. I was like, fuck, I suck. Like, you, man. He just always had that, that thing, dude. Like you say, he, so he must've been a hell of an athlete then to pick that up. Well, he's just um, dedicated to everything he's ever done. He's fucking dedicated to the death. Like, yeah, man. He's like that. So how did you, how did you wind up uh, getting started with Wes? Um, So Robert Andrews is a buddy of mine who used to skate with us. And I went to his house. I hadn't seen him in a while. I was riding for this skate company as a 38 year old man. It was my first sponsor ever, which was rad. It was like a real small company, but shit, I was getting free decks and clothes and shit. I was like, this is, this is fucking great. So, you know, I'm working as a fireman sponsored skateboarder. Um, I'm going like flying to Florida and filming and shit. It was, it was amazing. And, uh, shit, I just lost my train of thought. You talk uh, about getting connected with Wes. You said it. Yeah. Shit. Uh, the your story, boy, your boy, your boy that had the, uh, oh, oh yeah. Okay. So anyway, he bought some skateboards from me and some wheels. Like I had my own name on some wheels. It was me with a zombie head with my head cut off. I was like, I had my own fucking wheels with my face on it. It was amazing. And, uh, Anyway, I go to his house to bring the shit that he bought. And uh, and he's like, hey, did you hear about Wes? I was like, Wes who? He's like, Wes Watson. I was like, Wes Watson. I just remember this blonde kid that we used to skate with. I go, you mean the kid that just fucking ripped all the time? Like, what? What? what, do you, what, what? He's like, he went to prison. I go, he went to prison? I didn't even know. He's like, dude, you have to look at his stuff. It's, it's fucking amazing. So I go, go on uh, YouTube when I got home, or he like sent it to me on Instagram or whatever, and I... Right when I hear it, I go, what is this guy, WWF or some shit, you know? And I was just like, kind of like, is this a show? And then and then I started listening, and I was like, this ain't no fucking show, dude. I was like, this is the truth. This is the fucking truth. And I binge watched like 24 hours of his shit, dude. Like, I was just like, this is insane, taking notes and shit. And uh, I mean, real quick, I realized I'd, I'd been getting comfortable in a lot of ways in my life. like floating you know just just that pull of just like man you ain't nothing compared to what you could be and my little baby girl was was being born uh like a week later so i i was looking at wes's stuff and following him following him a week later i'm in the hospital and my wife's in labor and i just had this like obvious feeling like you got to hit up wes right now and i was like crazy i'm in the hospital ice and labor i text him i go hey i'm whatever you're doing dude i'm in what what like, what's the longest term you got and that was the like his his just get rip program mindset program so i i got in that you know i was like i was in shape i was probably you know i was lifting every day and but i didn't have my nutrition dialed to the point where i was just like you know, with discipline, just that next level of discipline where you really pull power from the universe. Like I knew I needed that. And that's what, that's what Wes showed me was like, he's like, Hey man, there is another gear here of sacrifice that will give you a thousand times what you're receiving right now. And, um, and, and I followed that to the T that, that, and I just got back into that game of sacrifice. And the, the best thing I learned from Wes was that we were always looking for this break, this place where it's like, cool, lean times over and now it's bulk season or whatever. And, and yes, there is a controlled game that you play to build muscle, but there's never an off time to where you just get to relax. Because once you relax, 
you, you fuck everything up. Like it all has to be planned and system systematic. Um, but as humans, we always are waiting for this time to go on vacation and just let it go and, and fuck it all up again. And what happened working with Wes is I had a switch that just went never fucking stop, never take a break, never even take a rest. You don't need shit. You're going to, you're going to grind this out till the day you fucking die. And every commitment you make where you level up, you will remain in that place. You will never go backwards. And so that puts pressure on a guy to say never again, like, like, but, and my never agains will be different than yours and, and your never agains will be different than somebody else's. And this is what I'm realizing is that like, we all have these answers inside of us that tell us what we need to stop doing and what we need to start doing. And it'll be different for everybody. And, and for me, I'm starting to listen to that voice. I'm just going deeper and deeper and deeper to where I'm saying a lot of, I will always, and I will never till the day I die. And those are scary thoughts for people, but that's where the power lies is in that statement. When you truly believe it, like if someone's trying to quit fucking smoking cigarettes or something, I will never smoke another fucking cigarette again, ever. Like that is a powerful statement that when someone's starting to quit, they don't have the balls to say it yet. They don't quite believe it. But once they can actually say that and believe that, boom, they just reached a new level, you know? That's the power, man. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. And you just mentioned, you know, starting to speak to the higher power, right? Talk about that a little bit, man. How you you why now? Why do you why, like what's going on there? What's the difference now? You mean what changed? Yeah, like why why did you feel the urge now to start speaking to God and start speaking to your higher power and, and getting those downloads and those prayers? I, I want to love my people. Like I want to love my people to to the point where like their their change is undeniable. So like I need I need help. Like I can only go so far. Um, but I, I notice when I tap into this this idea of God booing me up in this game and giving me the words to speak, that it just ten times my power, you know. So, yeah. and, and I don't even care if it's true or not. That's where people are like, well, what if, what if it's just your own thoughts? And what if I don't care because it works. And it doesn't matter, man. It matters what you believe. I get to choose what I believe and, right. and what I believe serves people at a higher level. And so I choose to believe it. Yeah. Too many people choose to not believe everything and be skeptical. And, um, when you reach this place where you just believe, you just believe to, for the fact, mere fact that I believe I'm meant for something. I believe that I'm, I have greatness in me that can serve the world. I believe if I show up, lives will change. I believe that men being in my presence will be better for it. And because I believe it, it happens. Yeah. It's amazing, man. It, it's, I mentioned that book to you a little while ago, conversations with God, and they go over in that God, you know, when this guy's writing to Neil Donald Walsh, he's writing what God is telling him over the course of, I don't know how long it was, a couple of weeks. And, and God says the process of creation is a three-step process. It's your thoughts, your words, and then your actions. But it starts with your thoughts. That's how you create anything, right? And, and without that, you could go through the actions. You could do all that stuff. But if, if you don't have the proper thoughts, and like you said, you believe it. And now you speak it. Like I could feel it when you speak it, right? Those are your words, right? And then the, then the actions just follow that. So that's really, really cool, man, to see in living color, you know, that apply. Yeah, man. I mean, just if you believe that you can get uh, words directly from the source and guidance in everything in your life, like you truly believe that, you're going to have a very powerful and full life. Yeah. But well, it, takes, it takes steps in the dark in order to earn that belief because you have to see the fruits of the sacrifice. So like you have to take the shit that you're being compelled to give up or to change or to do. And all these excuses in your head are like, no, you don't need to do that. I mean, that's too extreme. And uh, oh, that probably won't work. And you just say, fuck it. I'm all in. Take it all from me. And, uh, and you, you just put it all on the altar and then you go, oh, this was the power I was seeking. Here it is. The power and connections on the other side of the sacrifice. And, um, and, and then so I found that before I started 
calling it God. It was universe. It was whatever. Yeah. And you can call it whatever you want. I don't care what people call it. It's fine. But um, for me, it started to take shape after I started understanding like suffering and sacrifice for a great cause is so powerful to make a fulfilled and amazing life that now I'm reading like the story of Jesus and I'm like, damn, this encompasses everything that I have been teaching my men and trying to live. And it's, it's too perfect. I'm just like, all right, that's my new coach. That's it, man. It's, <laughs> it's unbelievable. I always look at the Bible, right? And I read the Bible for the first time in full about two years ago after my grandfather passed, feeling his calling to go to it. But the, the, I always look at the, the, the thing from the Bible, we're made in the image and the likeness of the creator, is that we all have that power. God is a part of us, like you're, like you're living, right? And it was just, just it's so inspiring to see that, you know, inspiration in the spirit, because you've tapped into that, right? And a lot of people want that, but you see, you mentioned, Kyle, going through the, the dark, right? So speak a little more about that, because I think a lot of people, they get to the edge of the dark and then they back away. They don't even want to go into that tunnel. Yeah. 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 This is where, this is where like you're at that place where you would be willing to die for your purpose. And, 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 and I found my purpose is to lead men. And so how do you test yourself to know whether you'd be willing to die for your men? Well, if you'll take things away from yourself that, you really, really enjoy in your life for your men, <laughs> you're getting pretty damn close. So like a lot of my guys are trying to quit drinking. They're trying to quit smoking. They're, they're trying to quit being verbally abusive to their wife and their kids. Um, they're, 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 they're trying to quit binge eating. And so I just keep taking more and more away from myself. And it was first, it was, you know, the wake up times and then it was the workouts and then it was, hitting the macros and the nutrition. And then, then it was like these, this thought of like, man, these, the, you eat like four protein bars a day, just get rid of those. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. Those help me so much. And I'm just like, all right, those are gone. And then, then I'm sitting there on a call and I've got a, a freaking zinzer in my lip on a zoom call. And I heard, I just felt this feeling like, dude, these zinzers got you by the balls, dude. I'm like, I'm a fucking fireman, dude. This is how we get through the night. Like, nah, get rid of them. So fuck, throw those away. Now I'm twitching because I'm having nicotine withdrawals. And then at the same time, I hear the same poll go, bro, all get rid of all your bullshit. No, all whole foods. You're done. You're done for fucking ever. You don't, no more fucking snacks, no more cookies, cake, none of that fucking shit done forever. And I'm like, fuck, can I make that commitment? And I did. And I, I, I announced it and like, that's it. I'm done. And that's where the fucking idea, I started getting these visions of the warrior monk, this idea of like this powerful man that's willing to give up everything for his people. And, uh, and then it just, it just went, it just started going deeper and deeper, dude. Like my diet sodas had to go my fucking monsters. And I'm just like, fuck, what else are you going to take away from me? But at this point I, I get it. And so I, I happily go there and it's pleasurable to me to be able to go deeper because I'm leveraging sacrifice, I'm leveraging it for power. And so when my men are like having trouble putting the drink down, I'm like, dude, I have no dopamine release. Like I got, where do I go? Like at night I eat my freaking hamburger patties and maybe like a potato. And then it's like, I could eat an apple. Like, that's what I get. That's, that's it. Like, that's my dopamine scratch is a fucking apple. There's no, there's nothing else. You know, we got rid of porn. That was part of my life for a while. That's gone. Yeah. Like, so like, I'm in this place where like the only pleasures I get are, are like natural God's pleasures. Um, and I'm starting to see and appreciate life so much more. And then also being able to lead my men to where like, I'm in it with them. I'm always itching for something always. And so I understand that, that when you're in pain and you're stressed, you want to run and sedate and find something and hide. And I'm like, bro, I'm right in this fucking shit with you. And I ain't hiding. 
I'm right in the open. I'm fucking naked in the wind with you, bro. Like, let's just fucking handle it. Let's take the cold wind right to the fucking face until we get so used to it that it doesn't even hurt anymore, you know? And then when men see other men stepping up, they fucking step up. Love that, man. And we'll write that down. It's a writer downer. <laughs> That's great, dude. Now, in for people that are, that are hearing this, right? Like, obviously, the, the inspiration is very strong. But you have this, like, you were a fireman, like you said, right? You're you're probably vested in the system. You you have five children, right? You have all this stuff going on, and it, you it's easy to get those golden handcuffs and just say, you know, what? I'm just going to ride it out into the sunset, get yeah. my pension, all this type of stuff. So. Talk a little bit about that too, man. Like stepping away, you know, like realizing that, hey, just because I did this most of my life and I've got all these kids and a beautiful wife to take care of, I'm being called over here. You know, that's got to be fearful for for most people. Yeah, man, that was scary. Le like going on a leave was scary. Like that was scary. I mean, I've been a fireman for 15 years. I've been a employee my whole life, you know? And so that first day where I was, not getting a paycheck and it was all on me. I literally felt like this ball of panic just right in my chest, dude. And I was just like, it's all on me right now. Like I gotta go, I gotta go find some meat for my family like right now, you know? And um, I mean, and it was motivating. I mean, I, I would have days where by like 12 o'clock, if I hadn't pulled in like five grand, like I was knocking my neighbor's doors. Like I was all over the phone. I was all over the DMs. Like there was, there's nothing that was going to stop me. I'll have more conversations than anyone on this planet. And I will, I, and, and the, the cool thing is, is I have so much fucking proof that like, I can put that in, in a guy's face and just tell him like, Hey, I can, I can back them into a corner to a point where they either have to say yes, or they're going to have to lie to me because every man needs it. And, and, when you get to the point where you've been doing this long enough, where you have so much proof, they can't say anything because they know they want it and they know they need it. And the only other thing to do is to just hang up, run, hide, lie, and ghost. You know, so you're making people make a decision. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and the cool thing is in this world, like if you're, if this is what you're doing, like if you're helping men level up like this, Understand, like, you have the right and the authority to push them into a corner and make them make a decision. Like, at push all the way. Ask for the credit card. Like, push them because it'll make them have to make a decision. Guys are too soft, man. They're too soft. It's like, okay, well, let me, uh, let me think about it. Okay, cool. Well, we'll be here. No. No, why, why, why the fuck would you think about it? You're fat. Your marriage sucks. So you're going to think about it. You're going to think about living a shitty life or making a change. No, we make a decision now. So, cause you've been waiting your whole fucking life for this moment right now. All you're going to do is put me off and then make another excuse and move on. So we're going to make a decision now. Do you want to change or do you not? Shit. Okay. Well, and then they'll try to change this up. No, do you want to change or do you not? No, I do want to change. Okay, so what's the concern here? Like, push those people into the corner, make them make a decision. Nobody tells them the truth. Nobody does that. You know? Yeah. Hey, hang on just a second. Hey, Ronan, you got to get out of here, dude. You can't come in here when I'm doing this. All right. Yeah. He's like, he's like putting the fucking Xbox on. I'm like, I'm like, my eight-year-old dude, he's crazy. It's like, oh my god. But uh, but yeah, like like I. This is another thing in life, man. That that I'm finding. Um, we, I was talking about to my wife about this, and I'm I'm getting better at this too. A lot of this was just being around Wes too, which is rad because Wes, there's no filter there, not zero. No, no. It's a hundred percent truth of who he is, and how he feels at that moment, and so. Like my wife gets a call from uh, like uh, she was looking at lots to buy a while back and they were calling and following up with her. You could tell she's kind of annoyed at the salesperson who's like, oh, you know, checking in on the lot. And she's like, 
looking at me like, Oh my God. She's like, well, no, we're, we're, um, we're thinking about it. We're not quite sure. And, um, but, but we'll, you know, we'll get back to you. And then she gets off the phone. I go, are you actually thinking about buying that lot? She's like, no. And I'm like, are you going to get back to her? Probably not. So why the fuck would you tell her that we're looking at it and we'll get back to her? And I'm like, I'm not being mean. I'm just, I'm, I used to be like that too. I get it. She's like, oh, man, I don't know. And I'm like, it comes down to the, y- your fear of having uncomfortable moments with people or making them feel bad. And that is like to our detriment, our relationships, everything in our life. What if we were just straight up with people in every, like I go, I go, what if, she, what if they called you? Right? What if they called you and they're like, Hey, um, so we're looking at, what were you thinking about this lot still? And she's like, yeah, totally not interested in buying any lots at all right now. We're, we're it's completely off the radar for us. Oh, clear. Now this person doesn't have to keep you on their CRM, keep following up every week. Right. They, they're like, Oh, they're, they're going to get back to us. They're still interested. And, and we do that with our friends too. Like, Sometimes your friends are trying to like sell you some multi-level bullshit or something, you know? And we're like, we're like, they're like, would you want to sit on like a 20 minute presentation? You're like, oh yeah, that that would be fine. And then they're like trying to get calendar together and you'd keep dodging it. And it's this bullshit instead of just telling your friend, like, dude, I have zero interest in that bullshit that you're doing. Like zero, like I'm not going to do it, nor am I interested. And if you keep bringing it up, I'm probably going to avoid you like the plague. Like, (laughs) What if you said that? That, that maybe for a second they go, Oh, but then they would know that you're real honest and you have boundaries and that like, you're going to tell them how it is, you know? Really? Yeah. So, but, so simple, but it- <laughs> it's crazy. We do it all the time. If you just watch yourself throughout the day and I still catch myself, like I, I had this, um, this guy who uh, I just met, he does coaching for seven and eight figure people. Um, I don't know him very well he wanted to partner with me and do like a high ticket coaching program, which maybe someday I will. And I was like, I started out going like, well, you know, we're doing these events and uh, I'm doing this modern monk movement with my guys or making an ambassador program. So, you know, so let me kind of see where we're at and maybe I'll get back to you. And then I said that and I go, actually, you know what the real deal is? I don't know who the fuck you are. Like, why would I trust you with my people when we haven't been through any shit together? Like I haven't seen you under duress. I don't know your family. I don't know how you treat your wife. I don't know your kids. Like, I don't know what kind of father you are. I Like, are you ripped? Like how disciplined are you with your food? Like, do you, like, where, where are you at? So, you know, so like, I just started asking these questions and he was taken back like, Oh shit. Like, that he's like, I guess that's fair. But part of him was kind of like, do you know who the fuck I am? You know, like, you can't talk to me like this. I've been doing this forever. I'm seven and eight figure coach. Like, who are you? But I don't give a fuck. I don't need anybody. So it's like, but it was real, you know? And I, I, that was one of those moments where I easily could have like jerked this dude off just, just so we could avoid a, a conflict. But in reality, that brought us closer together and made us trust each other more. Right. So if there is a future together, working together, that just got massively enhanced with that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, so uh, opposing to what most people do. Right. And it's always a, uh, I always, uh, that, that's why West, too, right. He's such a breath of fresh air, man. Like you said, no filter. Yeah. This is what yep. it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, I had, I tell, I tell, I'll refer my guys to him. It's like anybody wants to do coaching, I send them all the West, which which is funny because I, I I had this day where I had like, man, like 50 grand worth of people hit me up. And it was a, it was the day Wes posted uh, or the week Wes posted that I hit my seven figures and uh, had all these people hitting me up for business coaching. And I was like, I'm like, this is amazing. I, I made it. And like, now I'm going to go to the next level, you know, and like man, I had like a shit ton of dudes. I'd like, damn, so many were calling me. And so I got the credit cards, dude. I was ready to, I was to open up this whole business side of Supreme and Fathers. And I go, I had this inclination. I was like, hit up West, hit him up. I was like, ooh, something doesn't feel right. 
hit up Wes. I go, bro, a bunch of guys are hitting me up for business stuff. And I just collect a bunch of cards, but I don't feel right about it. He's like, bro, don't come, don't become a business coach yet, bro. Cause then your brand fucking gets burnt. And now you're just business coach guy. He's like, I mean, you can do whatever the fuck you want, but like, you're going to come in with the big boys and the sharks who, who are doing 10, 20 million and you just hit seven figures. Like, he's like, build your brand, dude. I was like, fuck, you're right. Holy shit. I could have, I could have like superhuman fathers could have become a coach of the coaches. And it, like, that just disgusted me. Like it wasn't, uh, you know? And so I was like, all right, well, I got some referrals for you, bro. So, but, but, but I guess the point here is one loyalty to your people, to your coaches and like two listening to this, to this voice of character integrity in you, which at the time sometimes doesn't make sense. Cause you could be like, well, no, I earned this shit. You know, they want to work with me. You know, nobody can control me. <laughs> ego, ego, ego. Rather than just believing in this poll, the same poll that made me start superhuman fathers was the same poll that made me quit fucking nicotine, which was the same poll that had me call Wes at that moment. You see? So there's these, this, this guiding that can happen in your life in all these aspects and usually it'll tell you to do something that goes against your selfishness, your ego, or your addictions. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say with you when you're saying that, man, the ego that, you know, I always look at that as edging God out, man. They keep ignoring it and getting the short term pleasure. Yeah. You know? So where, where did the inspiration, uh, I love it, man, with the superhuman fathers, like where was the inspiration for that as far as, okay, this is going to be it. Yeah, I, I started that. I think I started working with Wes, like probably been three months, maybe two, maybe two months, massive growth in just a couple months. And then uh, I just felt this pull to, um, I guess it'd been longer than that. So it, it actually been longer. We'd probably been at like the five month mark or something. And about month three, I was like, I need to become an entrepreneur. I was like, this is dumb. Like, why, why can't I make money for my family? This is dumb. What am I doing? So I started a supplement company called Roll Fast Burn. I, I paid a coach named Ryan Moran, um, who owns capitalism.com, who builds product brands. That's that's what he does. So it was an $18,000 ticket to join capitalism the capitalism incubator six month program that helps you build out your entire brand and uh so i started doing that and at the meantime i felt this pull to hold myself accountable to be a better father because i was still i was still suffering with some anger and depression and anxiety which is always there for men you know and i'm like how do i how do i show up better for my family after being at the firehouse for four days no sleep scraping a kid off the ground you know, watching some people die and then just like coming home and being like this great dad. It's like, that's fucked. So I, I started to learn how to disassociate between how I felt and how I showed up. And when I showed up right, I could come out of the darkness faster. And so I started Superhuman Fathers as an Instagram to have a group of people that we would just hold each other accountable. So I go on my stories and be like, Hey, all right, I'm coming home from the firehouse. I'm not going to yell at my wife. I'm not going to be sarcastic. I'm not going to yell at my kids. And then like five minutes later, I'd be like, I make a story. Like I just fucked up. I just yelled at my kid. I lost my shit. Uh, I'm going to go apologize to him now. I'm working on it. Damn it. This is a rough morning. You know? So I had this like bunch of people that were kind of working on it together. And then Wes was the one who was like, dude, you have this Instagram. What the fuck are you doing, man? Like, you're, you're fucking around with supplements and shit. He's like, the, the magic's right in front of you, dude. And I, I didn't see myself as anything special. I didn't see myself as someone who could really coach or influence. And then Wes kind of helped me see that, dude, you're, first of all, I already had a trainerized app that I was using in the firehouse for the guys at the firehouse. I already had like four or five massive, incredible transformations from guys in the firehouse. So it was like, I was already doing it, but I just didn't see my own power. I didn't believe until Wes was able to point it out and like, be like, bro, you are like one of the top humans I've ever met on the planet. Like, he's like, he's like, Kyle, you do the most, man. Like you do the most. I'm not even fucking around. And I was like, what, what does that mean, man? 
He's like, you fucking every day. It's like from morning till night, plus the fire job, plus you're, you're doing your supplement company, plus you're keeping your body right. Plus your marriage is amazing. Your kids love you. And they're all ripped skateboarders. And it's like, and you skate and you surf and you do jujitsu. He's like, you fucking do the most dude. And I was like, shit. And that's when I was like contemplating this. I do the most. And it just kept going through my head. And I was thinking about the superhuman fathers thing. And then, then the, I heard that voice clear as day, dude. We do the most. We need the least. That was the moment right there. That was the moment where I was like, I went on my stories and I was like, all right, I'm opening this up to the world. We're going to, and I think I said something prophetic, like there'll be thousands of us someday. And it's time to start this. And I got 30 DMs right away. Boom. And this thing started like on fire and it's been gangbusters ever since. And two years in, we're almost 500 members and there's no stopping in sight. And it's just getting faster and more powerful. It's incredible, man. You know, it's really incredible. You know, it, 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 Keep going back to that word inspiration, man. You know, and we never met you know, the first time we're talking, but I can feel it inspires me. And this is coming, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time, man, but you, you've created a movement, right? And you're tapping into, and that gives me the inspiration. Okay, go back to that. Go back to. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Remember that, like, the core of it all is that, like, that direct connection and that fire. And all you're doing is is doing what I'm doing for you right now, is just giving people belief. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I love it, man. We could uh, eleven fifty. So I got a couple more questions for you if if you got a few minutes. I'm good, man. All right. Yeah. So, man. So with that, what what is Talk about, okay, getting into this state of mind, right? You, you mentioned stripping away all the dopamine, right? Quick hitters that, that we can rely on so easily. What is your daily ritual like? Like I follow you right on Instagram. I see you guys, you know, you're up early. You get the boys, you know, you, you give them the option. Hey, you're either coming or you're not. And you know, it seems like they usually go with you to the gym. But talk about like your morning routine, your your morning process, your your daily process. What do you do at night to get ready for the next day? Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm in bed pretty early, like nine, probably asleep by nine 30, 10. If, if I get closer to 10, things are going to get fucking rough for me. Um, I used to do when I was in the firehouse, it was four 30 every morning, no matter what, even if we ran or not, those are some fucked up times for sure. Like I had some fucked up days where it was like 20 minutes of sleep. That was it. It was fucked. So then I get out of the firehouse and at four 30, I'm like, Bro, I get so much fucking sleep. This is crazy. And same time every night, not getting interrupted. This is insane. Like, so then, you know, then I'm looking at Wes's shit and I'm like, fuck, this motherfucker's up at 245 every day. I was like, why don't I just, even if I bring it back to 245, I'm still going to get more sleep than I did when I was in the firehouse. So I was like, fuck, let's just do that. And that, that was like the sweet spot of where like I wake up and I'm like, oh, fuck me. Wow. Uh, now, you know, talk hearing from Wes, like he don't really have as much of, uh, of that, that issue. Like I'm still, I still got some pussy in me, bro. Like when I wake up at two 45, like a lot of times I'm just like, fuck me. I can't do this. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like I, I'm still panicking. Like, so like, like I ain't there yet, dude. And then, and then that's why I started doing the fucking cold shower too, because I was like, you little bitch, you fucking bitch. And now it's like, now I, I get up. I go take that picture in the mirror and then, it, then I turn that cold shower on and I sit there and I'm just like this, like, no, uh, 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 no, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and I just fucking get in there. And, uh, I used to, I would think about my men. I would think about the struggles that they're in. I would think about my little brother. Who's my, my head coach. Who's like, who goes to the Pacific ocean every morning at four 30 jumps in the cold Pacific and does a hundred burpees. And I'm like, I'm supposed to lead this motherfucker. I'm supposed to lead this fucking savage. And then my other guy, Chris, who's like, who helps build all my workouts and, and shit and follow up with guys. And like that motherfucker's working in the firehouse full time, works for me like 50 hours a week. Savage as fuck eating like only egg whites. He's a fucking savage. Like I'm supposed to lead these motherfuckers. So like, it just made me step up and 
lately because I'm getting more <laughs> connected to this idea of God and Jesus in the story. Now, when I get in the cold shower, I picture, dude, I picture Jesus hanging on that cross. And I'm just like, this is getting very deep. <laughs> I did not expect this to get this deep. But every morning, that's now what goes through my head. When I get up and go in that cold shower, I'm just like, just, just picturing him suffocating and just smiling. Like, this is what has to happen, you know? And uh, that's... So that's that. That's like right out in the morning, and then then I get to work. I start creating content, writing, journaling, um, coming up with frameworks and ideas as I'm fresh in the morning. Um, I'll probably do some stories, um, and then I'll work with now. Now I have a media guy that I'll work with making reels and stuff, um, and then at the same time, uh, I'll work on like my most important thing. So if I have some shit that I need to get done that day, I'll get on that right away. And then at 5.30, um, I go to the gym with my two sons and my wife every morning till about 7. Come home at 7, eat some something. Usually it's like Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, protein scoop, or like maybe some like um, like this morning I had three quarters, uh, three quarter pound, 96, four ground beef with an egg. That was it. Um, and, uh, and then we get on calls. And then we fucking save lives all fucking day. Like I'm putting people against the wall all day in the corner, like make a move, make a fucking move. And, um, and I make a fucking, I try to make as much money as I can for the business, for my family. And I try to change as many lives as I can all day. And around six o'clock done work's done. And it's focused family time. And I'm tired as fuck. And, and that's where like the real test is like, how do you show up as a man and a father and a husband who's like focused, giving energy when you've been up since two forty five in the morning, you fucking had a grinder of a fucking day. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you manage it, man. Then you, then you guys eat. Do you like a family? Yeah, we, time meal? Yep. Yep. We eat together as a family and we, you know, they, my kids eat what we eat. We'll, we'll have a lean, lean meat. A vegetable, a carb. They eat that, and then then they all run run a train on cereal later. But <laughs> that's good, man. And then you and then you wrap it up once you get them them to sleep. You you get them like you said, you're in bed by nine thirty or so. Yeah, yeah. We we'll usually like we we'll usually sit on the couch and watch a show or something for like thirty minutes as a family hang out and uh, just veg a little bit on the couch together, and then we'll get all their stuff ready for school the next day. Make sure the house is picked up, cleaned up. Um, and then uh, and then like if I have a couple loose ends, I got to tie up. I'll go up to the office real quick. Maybe do 30 minutes of work to get ready for the next day. And then it's off to the races again. Yeah. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. Yeah. Yeah. I found myself like a couple days like lately, like fucking laying there till like 315 and just like, fuck me, dude. So like. It's crazy. It doesn't get easier. It's like shit gets harder as stress increases. Cause like, as the business grows, as my kids get older, as I'm having higher expectations with how I show up for my wife, cause like what used to be really good marriage, I thought is absolute shit now. Like, like if we're not completely enamored in love, connected spiritually and having like amazing sex, like our marriage is fucked. Whereas before, I always have sex three times a week. We're not fighting. Things are good. I was like, this is great. But your, your expectations rise. And so your, your stress levels rise because you're trying to maintain things at such a high level that like as your stress levels rise, it's harder to eat your macros right. It's harder to keep the diet in order. It's harder to get up in the morning. All, all the little things start to shake because there's more pressure in the whole system. But that's the point. You want to increase pressure on the whole system so that the simple things are still difficult as you increase pressure, because soon those, that pressure level will become normal for you. And then you can increase it again, you know, just like a muscle. Yeah. That's excellent, man. That's excellent. Was It's very uh, obvious to see why you're creating the following that you've created. You know, it's, it's uh so the energy doesn't lie, man. It's, vibrating at a high level did and uh one last thing i'll reference for you is power versus force dr david hawkins book i read a long time ago 
and he talks. So he did that kinesiology testing, you know, with every everything you could think of as far. He had a spiritual awakening, but you know, one thousand is pure consciousness, right? Like pure love. And he, to Jesus was pure, you know, one thousand. I think Buddha was there. Gandhi was like a level five hundred. So this is exponential, right? Like it, the most of the world operates at a, a level of like right below two hundred. A huge difference between a two hundred and a three hundred. You know, and he talks about how Gandhi brought down the whole British Empire through being vibrating at a level of five hundred, which was like whatever it was. I can't remember if it was bliss or whatever it was. And you had the British Empire operating out of pride below the level two hundred. And you, my point with telling you that is you could see, you could feel it, I should say, that, that you're, vib- you're vibrating at a very high level, man, which is just, it's just cool, to, cool to be a witness yeah. to. Yeah, that's really cool. What was yeah. the other book you said? Power versus Force. And then you told me one of those. Conversations with God. That's, that's, I think you'll like that, dude. This guy, you know, God comes to him. I don't know if it was in the 70s. And he just, now I think he's got four in the series. But that that first book, man, it's just... It's not like reading, like the Bible could be very dry, right? Like I wanted to go back to this year and it's like, it could be very dry. And, and this book is just like you were saying this morning, God is talking to and he's just writing down. He's asking him all these questions. He's he, writing down the answer. Man. Yeah, he he has the skill of communion. Like he's, he's. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That is the skill that, um that I'm developing. You yeah. are, man. <laughs> you are, man. So I'm going to make sure I stay connected to you, man tap into that that torch you got man that light it's crazy I, I was having this conversation with my guys uh in in one of my zoom meetings we had 92 guys in our zoom meeting on monday blew me away and we're i was talking about like just how you have the answers you just have to connect to this powerful universe and this god to just guide you in your decisions and we're just facilitators of that and then i get on this call um i'm part of the uh warrior uh Warrior Council with Garrett White with Wake Up Warrior. Um, you know, he kind of blew my mind and I joined his mastermind. And um, his whole thing was about how he's like, I found the whole point of all of this is to bring you guys into communion to, to give you that skill. And I was like, dude, I was just, this is what I've been feeling. This is what I've been teaching my guys. And then he says the same shit. It's just, it's all connected, bro. Like dude. we, we are all connected. We're all learning a lot of the same things at the same time. Um, and those messages are out there just vibrating, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Right on. It's powerful, man. So Kyle, where, I mean, I could talk to you all day, but I'm going to be mindful. <laughs> I'm not busy. And well, I'm sure, we'll, you know, I would love, love to do this again. Part two, I got a lot of questions, but where can people that are first being exposed to you, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you or to follow you? Like, Give me all that and I'll put it all in the show notes. Yeah. Yeah. Go to uh superhumanfathers.com if you want to uh meet with one of the brothers or myself and and look towards joining. At Superhuman Fathers on Instagram is a great place. Uh we just started our YouTube channel, Superhuman Fathers. We have a bunch of videos on there with my wife and I's podcast, along with um our last live event that we did. Um, and then uh you can also you can also just text me at any time, 760-277-7219, 760-277-7219. That's me on the other other side of that text. So freaks people out. People test it because I'll put it on everything. And they'll be like, hey, I'm interested. And then I'm like a video with my family. And I'm like, all right, let's fucking go, dude. Tell me about yourself. And they just freak the fuck out and just ghost. And then I then I just harass them with text. I'm like, you're bitching out already? Like, you just see my face and you're already scared? Like, this is why you're not making any changes, you know? And then some of them will come back and some of them won't. But it's like, they had that moment of inspiration where they're going to make the move and then they have immediate remorse and fear of what, what they may have to do, you know? Yeah, it is. It is funny, man. Because like you said, as a man, I think we all battle that at some level. Right, yeah. but then once you, you, you like you, you stripped it all away, like you're doing, man. You know, but it's it's people are just so, uh, you know, it's like the lovey. Like my daughter's got to love you, right? It is, dude. It's the lovey. It's yeah, the, love. the, the num nums. Yeah, that's it. Uh huh. <laughs> this has been a pleasure, bro. This has really been, uh, you know, this is gonna be the highlight of of uh, one of the highlights of my week. I'm sure, man. Just being inspired by. It. 